welcome to the Recovery Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Abbasi. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic and stroke survivor. And today is day 29. So, (laughs) excuse me. I uh, am hoping that you're still plugging away at the plank challenge. If you are doing three minutes by the end of the month, you should be at 170 seconds. And if you are going for five minutes, you are at 270 seconds. Good luck today. And today I want to talk about the daily trip that I make from discouragement to hope. And over the years that I've been sober, this has been more of a weekly trip or a monthly trip where I was spending a lot more time in the area of hope and less time in discouragement. And I've found myself over the past eight months really making that decision on a daily basis. It's it's a daily decision now. Um, am I going to choose to be hopeful? Am I going to choose to um, face whatever challenges I am for the day with um, a smile, you know, um, with a smile in my eyes, you know what I mean? And it's like a seesaw for me every day. Um, It just, it didn't used to be this way. So um, one day, you know, I'm ready to change the world and I'm filled with confidence. And then the next day, I want nothing more than to just hide, you know, just crawl back under my covers and not get up. Um, So oscillating between wanting to conquer my challenges and feeling utterly defeated by them is just, it's happening daily for me. Um, discouragement, though, I've realized is a sign. It's a sign that I've drifted away from my sobriety program and that I've drifted away from accepting my physical limitations. Um, Whenever I recognize that and pick up the big book or give somebody a call or, you know, start listening to a voiceover recording so that I can learn voiceover. Whenever I, like, replace that discouragement with an action that moves towards accomplishing something, it seems to adjust my mindset. Um, So those of you who are lifetime listeners, um, you know that I used to put stickers on my mirror on days I felt hope because I found that celebrating those small victories reinforced the feeling of hope um, and gives you a little shot of dopamine when you do that. Um, that was something I learned in my in my research for one of the podcast episodes. To, so trying to acknowledge the light even on days that feel a little dim. And um, so today's reflection, uh, daily reflection on the AA website hit home for me. Um, it said that the power within me, is stronger than any fear before me. And I've seen strength actually in myself that I I ne- I didn't even know I had. Um especially when I was drinking, like before I got sober, psh, I didn't think I was strong. I was so weak and unable, you know, but actually I was unwilling is what I was feeling. And I thought that that kind of strength was only in 
other people, you know, like I saw that kind of strength in my brother and sister. And I see that I saw that strength in other people at work, other leaders at work, other leaders in society, you know, in our nation. I never thought that I had that in me until I put a few 24 hours together in sobriety and I started to have that feeling of, hey, look what I can do. You know, at first it was like, it was like self-talk more, you know, um, things like going out and starting to do that running, um, my 5K, like, I had no idea my body was capable of doing that. I really didn't. Um, That might sound ridiculous, but I never pushed myself that hard. And, um, And just having having that happen to me, I, you know, it didn't happen to me. I did all the work, but I just didn't realize that that kind of work would provide that kind of result. I wanted to do more things like that. I wanted, so I started doing hot yoga (laughs) and I became like obsessed with that. I say obsessed because it felt so good that I just wanted to keep doing it. And then it transferred over to things at work. Like I didn't realize that I was such, um, so good at my job, you know, um, until I was, and you know, I put in the work and I got the results from the work. Um, and I just, I never tried that hard in life, I guess. I was lazy. And so I started being like, look what I can do for myself. And then I started wanting to show other people, look what I can do. Um, And I still do it, you know, with my baking and my sewing. I'm like, look, look, everybody, look what I can do. (laughs) Um, I made this uh, Thai vegetable green curry tonight in the Instapot. And when my husband got home, he was like, oh, it smells like sense of Thai in here. And that feels good. Everybody likes to be complimented, you know, but I did have that feeling like, look what I can do, honey, you know. Um, So discouragement for me stems from unrealistic expectations. It's like I'm demanding perfection from myself and I want progress to happen on my own time. Um, I want to be able to predict the outcome of my hard work. So I, I don't, you know, sometimes I don't really recognize how hard I worked to run a 5k. When I think about how it was accomplished on a daily basis, it just seems like, how in the hell did I have that kind of perseverance? Um, I mean, it was every day for months and months. I just kept building my endurance until I was able to do it. And I don't remember the exact number of months until I finally was able to run a 5K without walking. Um, But once I was, I did it three or four times a week because it just felt so amazing that I was capable of doing that. Um, But it didn't happen. You know, there were days that I went out there and I expected every day to feel better than the day than the day before. And there were days that I went out there and I was like, I feel terrible. I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, There were not a lot, but there were days that I had to stop. You know, like I was halfway through and I was like, I just can't do it. 
today. Um, I can't, maybe a handful of times did that happen, but it did happen. And what I didn't do is give up. You know, I didn't give up on the whole goal. I, I sometimes had to give up for that day because it was, I was having a bad day, you know, whether I, maybe I was a little under the weather or my body was exhausted. Um, What was important was that I was listening to my body. And I did keep that in mind along that whole journey was like, if my body is telling me don't do it, you got to stop. And that that journey of learning how to run a 5k, both physically learning and mentally learning is such an amazing example that can be applied to all these other things that I'm facing. So um, this not being able to predict the outcome of my hard work. Like, I, when I was running, I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get to a 5k. I was afraid that my, um, I had hurt my hips years before that, doing an Avon walk, um, in honor of my mom who had breast cancer. And, I did not listen to my body for that Avon walk. And I, I think permanently damaged my hips. And what I was afraid of was that I wasn't going to be able to complete the 5k because it was going to end up being too much for my hips. Um, and that's why I was like, so adamant about listening to my body. Um, I was hoping that I was going to get there, but I wasn't totally sure I was going to get there. And for what I'm handling right now, um, it's interesting. Like, I I just started reading the book of the month, listening to the book of the month, um, and that is uh, Identity Theft by Deborah Meyerson. And... This mindset can feel like strength sometimes, but like Deborah Meyerson says in her book, um, or she alludes to it, um, this mindset pulls us away from practicing acceptance and being open to healing our bodies in their own time and acknowledging what our bodies are capable of, our limitations. Um, It's like, this might be a bad example, but I was thinking of, uh, because I made sourdough tonight, it's like stretching my sourdough at the point where you got to stretch and fold, if you uh, are familiar with sourdough. At at that time, you're like, stretch the sourdough far enough that you're activating the gluten, but you're not ripping the dough. You know, you have to find that happy medium where I am practicing acceptance of my body's limitations, but yet I'm still moving myself forward. You know, it's... She said... So in the book, she said, she talked about restoring ourselves post-stroke and the confusion between staying determined to not let the stroke win and battling for more recovery or letting go of our past selves or both. And, you know, I can't even articulate how much this resonates with me. Um, This is precisely what I've been trying to tell people. Um, It's my excuse for not learning voiceover on Mac sooner. I felt like if I did, 
if I committed to learning voiceover fully and transitioning 100% over to voiceover, I was giving up on recovery, on full recovery of my vision. And I, what I had done subconsciously is I time boxed my healing. I said, if I don't recover fully um, within a certain amount of time, then I'm never going to recover and then I should switch over to voiceover 100%. Well, what is that time? You know, what is that that time box? I don't know what it is. No doctors know what it is. So why am I not enjoying my life right now? Why am I not setting myself up to be able to enjoy life with the limitations that I have right at this very moment? Um, If I don't regain my vision on my time, it doesn't mean I never will, um, but I have to find enjoyment again today. My sobriety program teaches me that, like, about living in today, and yet in stroke recovery, I find myself constantly looking back at my past self and looking forward at my less than complete future self. So yesterday I spoke about the danger of waiting until we're ready and how it robs us of the joy that comes after overcoming a challenge. And in the same vein, I want to emphasize that courage and hope are the antidotes for discouragement. Courage and hope propel me forward and help me to surface joy in my daily life. And I have to make that choice every day, sometimes multiple times a day, to combat my own discouragement with courage and hope. And if I compare it to sobriety, you know, early on in sobriety, I had to make that decision Um, multiple times a day that I'm going to stay sober today. You know, um, I'm not going to go pick up a drink. I'm not going to go drive to the store. Um, I had to make the decision when I had the negative thoughts or the negative ideas come in my head. Um, And that's the same thing I've got to do now. I've got to Acknowledge discouragement has just entered my mind and I need to take action and do what it takes to um, to combat that and be courageous and, and hopeful. And um, to me, again, it, it seems like what gets me feeling more courageous and hopeful is to do the action that portrays courage and hope, and then I start feeling it on the inside, right? So when I was talking about yesterday about this idea of not waiting until we're ready, like get up and do it, um, when I didn't want to go to those sobriety meetings on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., instead of waiting till I was ready, as soon as I started feeling that Um, hesitation, I linked that to action and I just got up and started moving towards the direction. So I feel like in the same way, that's what I need to do with discouragement. When I'm starting to feel like I can't do it, you know, I don't want to live like this. I don't, um, I'm not happy. That's when I have to link that feeling of discouragement to action, to, um, you know, opening up my laptop and practicing voiceover would be a great way to combat that discouragement. Or if I'm feeling discouraged, do something that I've already learned, like go on my iPhone and play with voiceover, because I already know how to do that. And that might be Um, more of like a celebratory dopamine hit for me. So, you know, I can't wait 
for the perfect moment to start living fully. Um, Because the truth is the perfect moment is right now. There's nothing to wait for. If I keep waiting, I'm passing on full enjoyment right now. So this was, yesterday was a pep rally for you all. Uh, Today was a pep talk for myself. So thanks for listening and I will talk to you tomorrow. 